Thank you so much for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. So in this video, uh, I forged a Type K Viking Axe, or at least my interpretation of the Type K Viking Axe. So what info is there to find about this axe? Well, not that much, uh, at least what I found. Uh, what it says is that it's very similar to the Type L and it has some similarities to the other types of axes as well. So if you haven't figured it out uh, already, I've been trying to forge some of the Peterson typologies of the Viking axes. So I've forged the type B, the type C, the type L, the type M, and now the type K. Uh, but from the pictures that I could find of drawings of this axe, uh, my sense compared to the type L that I probably want to revisit sometime in the future is that it has more of this curve to it, like backward uh, edge curve. Uh, and also that the lugs uh, are a little bit pointier, at least from uh, the footage that I could find. Other than that, it's very similar to the type L. I made it quite small. Um, I don't have the exact measurements here, but as you can see, it's a one-handed axe. I also got some comments that it would probably pre be pretty good for throwing. I don't know about that since I'm not uh, experienced in axe f f throwing at all. Uh, but it was a really fun axe to make. I really, really enjoyed it. So the body is made out of mild steel. And I did uh, another unsymmetrical fold, which uh, in my opinion is probably the most fasc fascinating one and also the most logical one, if you ask me. I, having done both of them, the, both the symmetrical and the unsymmetrical, I don't really get the point of the symmetrical forge weld anymore, since you have so much more freedom with the unsymmetrical fold. You can make pre-forge the one end to be whatever you want. You can make it into a beard before you even fold it. And there's so much freedom in the unsymmetrical fold, in my opinion. So, uh, but anyway, so I did the unsymmetrical fold. Uh, I also had, uh, let's see, what kind of steel was it? Uh, it's C45 edge steel, uh, forge welded in. I did that in the beginning before forging the, the eye. And I also left, you can see here, if you look closely, you can see the, the cleft still uh, visible here. Now this is not a delamination, this is a trace. And there's a big difference, okay? I've been having this discussion with a couple of friends that I trust really much in the blacksmithing community and we have been discussing like old finds. If you look at really old axes, especially early Scandinavian hewing axes and stuff like that, you can clearly see the forge welding um, spots. Like they're, they're clearly visible, but they're not imperfect. They're not delaminations. Uh, I mean, I could easily grind this off if I wanted to, or I could spend another heat blending this out. And I stood there and I was asking myself, should I do that? Nah, not after the discussions we've been having lately. Like the discussion where like, there's, there's a big difference between a delamination that's visible and a trace of a forge weld. Now the trace of a forge weld, like why, why would they leave it there? Because it was not important. Like back in the day, I mean, they wanted to produce uh, the axe and what was the purpose of the axe? It was cutting, not the aesthetics at, uh, that much. I mean, that could, of course, depend on who bought it and stuff like that. But if you see some of the axes, anyways, if you see some of the older axes, you can clearly see that they left, they didn't grind that out, they didn't blend it in. Uh, I mean, it wasn't probably an extra heat or something like that, and they just didn't mind. It just was there. and. Uh, and to this day, like me, at first I was looking at that and I saw it as a flaw, you know, like couldn't hide that. But who am I to question their knowledge, right? Of course they could hide it if they wanted to, but it was just not necessarily. And also, thanks to that, they, uh, they left us clues on how to make the things that they made. Like you can clearly see the forge welds. And uh, I've started to like uh, the, the aesthetics of leaving the forge weld visible, you know. Uh, not cleaning it out all the time. Uh, so yeah, that's just my pref preference. Uh, I don't do it all the time, but sometimes I like to do it, especially on this type of weld where you have like an unsymmetrical weld and it's only on one side of the body. I think it's kind of beautiful. It, it, it just shows you how it was done. And uh, yeah, 
I really like it. But that's up to you. I mean, if you want to forge it and grind it out, that's easy done. I could just take the grinder to here if I wanted to, and it's done. Uh, it's like there's nothing. I mean, if there's a delamination and you can stick your finger inside of it or you know, a paperclip, then it's a delamination, probably. Maybe it's not that big of a delamination, it's, it's solid under, but in this case, I can't get anything under it. So it's not a delamination, it's just a visible forge weld. So, enough me rambling about forge weld and how visible they are. Uh, they, it was a really fun axe, uh, axe to make. This handle is made out of ash wood and I have no idea if they were... I mean this has a little bit of an S curve in, in it, not that much. Uh, the head actually uh, tricks your eyes so it looks like more of an S curve that, that it, that it actually, than it actually is. So, uh, so um, yeah, but uh, maybe a straight handle would have been cooler. I, I don't know, to be honest. Um, I think both look pretty cool. Um, so yeah, now we made the Type KX. I'm really happy with it. It looks great and fun, really fun project to, to make. And if you're keen on getting into blacksmithing and axe forging in particular, I really, uh, I mean, doing these symmetrical and unsymmetrical welds are really something special and it's such a nice feeling when you manage to get them right and uh, solid. I mean to test the sol solidness of your forge weld put the drift in and force it down and if it cracks open then it's not a good forge weld but if it doesn't you have a great forge weld and you can take that with you on the next axe build and you become better and better and better and better. So yeah it's a super nice feeling to be able to to accomplish that type of forge weld. Uh, I uh, dressed the handle with some raw linseed oil, uh, the head, head as well, just for some basic rust protection. So yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like the video if you like the video. If you like the video, like the video. Uh, subscribe if you like videos like this. You can support me on Patreon if you want to. The link is in the description. You can follow me on Instagram uh, and Facebook and visit my website. Well, you can't visit my website really yet, but very soon. I will announce that on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook when you can visit my website. Um, and if you have any questions, you can email me. Uh, you can find the email in my bio here on YouTube as well. So have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.